Greetings, everyone. This is Elizabeth. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am here representing Team Tiny and their hashtag Driven Hop. Their hashtag this month is Team Tiny Ice Cream Hop. So if you go down in the description and you click on that hashtag, a new window will open and you'll see all of the fabulous creators that are participating in the hop. We are not sponsored, so everybody will have different images or projects that they're working on. The Team Tiny, if you're interested, it is a fabulous collaboration with all of the small YouTubers, crafty YouTubers, that have less than a thousand subscribers. And we do these hops once a month, hopefully trying to generate some new subscribers and viewers for our small channels. And then when we hit a thousand subscribers, we graduate on out of there. And then the next batch of creators who are just starting can join up, which you can do at any moment. So check that link down in the description for the Facebook Team Tiny if you're interested. Today... I have a Whimsy Stamps Penguin Ice Cream, and you can go to whimsystamps.com to grab your digital download. Yes, it's another digital download for me. I was like, ooh, ice cream hop, I want to join that. But I didn't have any ice creams, and I didn't want to wait for a stamp to arrive in the mail, because, you know, sometimes things can go wrong. So I was like, I'll find something digital. And so I went to Whimsy Stamps because I know they have beautiful uh, digital images. And I was perusing through. And sure enough, they have penguin ice cream. Now, the great thing about digital stamps is you can print them multiple times. You can fill a whole sheet with them. I purposely did mine in a uh, four and a quarter by five and a half rectangle so I knew that I could cut my paper in half and they would all fit. I even did a little a little guy. I thought it would be fun to do a little one. For those penguins I wanted to pull out my ink tents. I haven't used them very much but I really wanted to and these are the colors I chose. And then I also pulled out um, a couple of blues, a blueprint sketch, and a mermaid lagoon so that I could ink up some edges. And I grabbed two sheets of 12 by 12 cardstock. Um, well, I guess that's not really cardstock. It's just a piece of paper I have in my stash. I got a light blue and a dark blue. And of course, I inked the dark blue with a darker blue and then the light blue with the lighter blue. All I did was I cut one strip off of each at four and a quarter inches and then I cut that strip into five and a half so I got my two or four card panels all right so here we go are you ready ta-da here is number one this little penguin turned out so adorable for the background, I just soaked it with some water and then I took the paintbrush, let me grab that real quick, and I got it wet and just dabbed right on there and put it into the puddles of water. All of that luscious blue is one shade of blue. That one pen and then I flicked some blue and black into the background. Now when I was coloring this, um, I used a gray to cover him in and then I use the black to go in for the darker spots. This here allowed me to get a nice variation in color and then his little beak are the two shades of orange. Okay and this one only took like 20 minutes to do the whole thing in between drying and whatnot and I did this one very light. Um, the more you cake on your ink tents, the harder it is to activate it. And if you don't activate every little particle, it will move if you get it wet again. But when you do it very light like this and then layer it up, you're guaranteed that you're going to activate every little bit. And that's really 
important because ink tents, when they are dry, they don't move. They stay put and they have stained and colored your paper. It's a really great medium. Ink tents is not a watercolor. It is a water soluble ink, but they do move like a watercolor pencil. So you can use them like that and layer them up and everything. It's really, really fun. Now, I had gone out of the lines right there, so I was like, all right. So I took a little bit of water and went around his whole inner white area and then just added a little bit more gray. So I covered up a boo-boo. My next one was this little cutie, and this one, I just... That way there I could put a sentiment on it if I wanted to. Again, very loose with the watercolor. The difference between these two is I actually put pencil mark right around and then drug it out with a lot of water. Whereas this one, I only, I put the puddle of water in and then tapped it in. And I got really dark with the black and the grays and the whites. And this is where I used my grays and whites was in their highlight. But you can see it's just really dark and built up. And you can barely see these little dots. Because that's how it's printed. So if you don't like the dots, you can definitely build up your color and everything. And get it nice and rich and beautiful. Okay. So those are those two. And the fun thing about digitals is you can flip them, okay? So you could literally make two little ones and they could be like touching their ice creams for a cheers kind of thing. But here, I caked on the color. I <laughs> didn't put it in layers. I just went really strong with the black and over the gray and everything and just let it get really dark and then I hit it with the water this is not fully activated if I hit this with water right here some of that black is gonna pull out okay and then I did the loose water background just like this one okay and then we've got our little cone and two shades of well it's not really two shades of brown this one is called mustard so I don't know if it's a yellowy color, but the mustard looked really good with that. And so I left it. And here you can see that you can ink over it. I used Simon Hurley's, or sorry, no, not this time. I used the Mermaid Lagoon and inked up the edges of this one just to darken it up and add a little more texture to it. So that one went around that one. And this one... I did ink that up, um, pull out this other sheet. You can see it changed the color of it. See how dark that is? Same sheet of paper. If I were to peel this off, the inside of this is this color. But uh, I went over it with this one, the darker, because this one didn't show up. Okay. So you can definitely ink over your colored paper get that and then we had one more off of our sheet we have this one where I shrank him down just a little bit because I thought it would be fun to multi-layer him now this one I don't know if you can see but the paper was still a little damp when I went through and inked up the edges I first went with this one right close to the edge super super close I didn't drag it in very much and then I went through with the lighter one and brought it in a little bit more this one I did very loose I was like what if people are shaky because I get shaky as you can see I went out of the lines here and this is what inspired me to do this is I went out of the lines and I was like what if I did it on purpose what if I just went out of the lines and so in these areas I soaked the water. I put water on his head and then I drug it out into puddles. And you can see I made these wonderful 
clear water puddles and then I grabbed my paintbrush and I grabbed the black well actually no that's gray I grabbed the dark gray and then just tapped it right into those puddles and it started to spread and do really beautiful stuff and then I went in with a tissue and blotted it up I don't know if you can see some of that texture in there it's from blotting and then I went in with the black and tapped that in I made more puddles I had to let that dry and then when the black was dry I went in with all the individual colors and I let them dry which it didn't take very long because as soon as you get to puddle you add your color and you tap it off so you can get really messy and nobody will know because it'll look like you did it on purpose so don't be afraid to get a little crazy it's only paper this paper is a little bit more expensive because I did use watercolor paper. This has a very nice smooth texture to it and it went through my printer beautifully. A lot of um, printers won't print watercolor paper. This is a Fabriano 140 pound watercolor paper, hot press, so it's very smooth. And when I printed it, I sent it through my mink hot foil, um, mink, sorry, toner foil. And I added clear toner foil to this just to set the toner. Because when you print on watercolor paper, it's really thick and the ink doesn't always set. So I don't know if you can see, but the black is a little bit shiny. See, oh, you can see it in the eyes right there. So that's what I did. And it did stick to the specs, even though the specs aren't 100% black. Um, if you're no foiling. Um, mink foil and um, laminator foil, basically. Laminator. Yeah, a laminating machine. Foil, it uses heat and toner as it's glue and it activates and it sticks but it prefers dark rich stuff and it doesn't always stick to watercolor paper but I found a really good watercolor paper that likes toner but shocking enough even with these thin lines it's still stuck so um, I will list all of these supplies down in the description for you along with the links to Team Tiny and the hop tag hashtag team tiny ice cream hop and uh i hope you enjoyed seeing my lovely creations they just turned out so stinking cute and this one if you did this on a card this could be on the inside too it doesn't even have to be on the outside so you could print an inside card or make it a postcard and ship it off like that. So very versatile digital stamp. And I thank you all so much for joining me today. If you like the video, please hit that thumbs up. And if you want to see more from me, be sure to click the subscribe button and that bell to be notified of an upcoming videos or lives. Thank you very much. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.